Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Adonai's Kingdom. The kingdom where we talk about the Most High God, Jehovah Jireh. Yes, Yeshua. We talk about the Holy Spirit. We talk about the Old Testament, the days of the Old, the New Testament. And now, the testament that we are in right now. And all in all, it's all about the Most High. And that's Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. My name is Awaudi the Messenger. And let's start with a word of prayer. Okay. Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we glorify your works, your ways. The whole year you've been so helpful to us, O oh Father. We've been relying on you and you've not let us down, O oh Jehovah. I thank you for my vi viewers, each and every one of them. Bless them as they close the year. And as they start a new year, be with them. Make sure, O oh Father, that their tables are full, their houses are full of joy. In Yeshua's mighty name and Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. Father, Lord, use me as an oracle for your word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, guys, welcome back. And yeah, it's a new week, new things. And uh, yeah, as for me, the week has been okay, apart from uh, my mom, my mom who's, uh, she was 86 years old, she had to move house to the kingdom. That means she left this planet Earth just after Christmas and she's now gone to be with the Lord and we thank God for that because by the way she left we know for me I'm 100% sure she's in a super place may the Lord rest her soul in peace forever and ever Amen Amen uh, Today's straight to today's message we are in joshua chapter 10 and uh yeah joshua i think we'll have to do it to, uh, in two sessions because it's quite massive and the title is creation obeys god the creation obeys god subtitled is sand sun stands still the sun stands still and I'll just go straight to the word in a, yeah, Joshua chapter 10. I think I'll go through, we'll go through half of it. The sun stands still. Now it came to pass when Adoni Zedek, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken I and utterly destroyed it and as he had done to Jericho and her king so he had done to Ai and her king and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them that they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities and because it was greater than I and all the men thereof were mighty wherefore Adonizedek king of Jerusalem sent unto Hoham king of Hebron and unto Piram king of Jamath and unto Japhia king of Lachish and unto Dehir Debir king of Eglon, saying, Come up unto me, and help me, 
that we may smite Gibeon, for it hath made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Wherefore, the five kings of the Amorites, the kings of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, king of Jamath, and the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped before Gibeon, and made war against it. So all these kings decided to go to war against the Israelites. Uh, in verse, uh, just because the Gibeonites decided to join hands with the Israelites. In verse 6, And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Suck, slack not thy hand from thy servants. So the Gibeonites knew that there was a war coming. They ran to Joshua. Slack not thy hand from thy servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal and he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of Vela. They decided to go and help the Gibeonites. Uh, so uh, verse 8, And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, for I have delivered them into thy hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Joshua thereof therefore came unto them suddenly and went up from Gilgal all night. And the Lord dis discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter of at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horan and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. That's up to verse 10. Let's see what the Lord, what the Holy Spirit is telling us about this. Uh, the first, in the first few verses, <coughs> you see, okay, the first verse from verse 1 to 3, there was this it came to pass when Adonizedi, king of Jerusalem, had heard how Joshua had taken I. You know, they were scared because of the unique judgment from God against the Canaanites. The Canaanites, that's why the, the enemies were so troubled. And as usual, what I always say, your enemies, if you walk with the Lord, if you walk with the Holy Spirit, the, your enemies will always be troubled seriously because they know that they, you've got a powerful force that's covering you. So they'll, they're, they'll be trying to find ways on how to beat you up. I mean, just attack you. They, they'll try to bring you down completely. So, you see this, the kings of Jerusalem, Jamuth, Lachish, Hebron, Eglon, you know, they decided to attack Gibeon. To them, the Gibeonites were sellouts. They wanted, I mean, they just, they thought that if they could be all of them together, they could finish the Israelites. But it wasn't going to be a smooth sailing. No. Where to them they thought that they were going to win, but if you see that uh, if you're with God, he's, He'll always protect you. These guys, they, the Gibeonites knew that if we stay with the Israelites and the Israelites have got a powerful God, we'll be protected. So they didn't worry. The moment they had problems, they ran to Gilgal. They went to Gilgal where uh, Joshua was for refuge and for help. Just like you, 
when you've got a problem, there's always somewhere that you have to run to. And that place you have to run to, I hope it's to the throne of mercy. Run to God. Run to Jesus. Whenever you're down, let your Gilgal be the Holy Spirit. That's where changes come. You see, these guys, they ran to Gilgal. Gilgal, and Gilgal has got a major point here. Gilgal is where it's a place of memorial for Joshua. That's in Joshua 4.20. That's where they started their journey, their major, main journey. It's a place of obedience. Obedience, that's in Joshua 5, 2 to 3. And then it was reproach was made in Gilgal. That's Joshua 5, verse 21. And also the manna stopped falling in Gilgal. That was in Joshua chapter 5, 11 to 12. And in Gilgal, that's where Joshua also met Jesus. If you look at uh, Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, let me just take you to that one. That's where Joshua met Jesus. And I'm sure you're wondering, Jesus was in the New Testament. How could Joshua meet Jesus? Let's go to Joshua chapter 5. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15. 5.13-15 That's the fall of Jericho. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as a captain of the hosts of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And he said unto him, What saith my Lord unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Lose thy shoe from thereof thy foot, for the place where thou standest is holy. When you go to the presence of God, what comes to your mind? The first thing that comes to your mind is holiness. That's the presence. When you go to presence, the presence of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it's about holiness. So this is where holiness was. Jesus was there taking care of his children. And you will see in verse 8 also, God told Joshua, I have given the Canaanites, the enemies, unto your hands. Meaning that even before the war began, God had delivered the enemies in Joshua's hand. It's like Joshua was just going to rubber stamp everything according to God in the spiritual world, the war had been won. So that's why I keep saying, let's trust in God. In whatever predicaments you might be going through, just trust in Him. And you'll find before you encounter any hardships, you'll be told everything has been delivered in your hands. And you'll find also in verse 10, God killed them all with hailstone. And you know, in verse 9, they walked, this guess they walked, um, Joshua and his men, they walked the whole night, yet they fought the whole day with the enemies. You see, you can't, as an army, you can't walk up the mountains, maybe 3,000 miles or 30 miles, however, whatever the distance, the whole night, and then the next day you start fighting. It, it's only God who can help us there. So you see here, it was God. So God decided to partner. He decided, 
he decides to partner with us to win souls. What he does, he conquers and then he uses us to go and take the spoil. He beats up the enemy and then tells you, go now, change those souls. I've prepared the way for you. Just go and rubber stamp, put your rubber stamp on it. God is always with us and he's, he'll always be with us. So you see, in verse 10, God killed these guys with hailstones. More than the Israel so the Israeli swords. Uh, in the Torah, it says that the stones from heaven. That's what, what the enemies were found themselves themselves being attacked with. So in verse twelve to fourteen, we find Joshua conquered them all because God gave them to the Israelites. And also you find this is where creation also obeys God. Joshua prayed for the sun to stand still. And what happened? The sun stood, stood silent. The sun listened to a human being who was being used by God. I mean out of bold everything that we do each and every one of us out there if you do something in boldness joshua was full of boldness he was so full of boldness to the point that he was just saying son stand still that is faith that is total faith we have to move with faith 100 percent make it i mean you just walk walk in, in faith boldness and everything that you want it's going to come to pass so you see joshua was moving with faith in faith and what happened the sun and the moon they obeyed they stood silent as witnesses the sun and the moon became witnesses unto the Most High God. In that one you see um, in Deuteronomy chapter 4 at verse 26. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 26. It says, I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day and you shall soon utterly perish from off the land where, where unto you go over Jordan and possess it. You shall not prolong your days upon it but shall utterly be destroyed. Here the heaven and earth are called as witnesses and also in joshua here we find the sun stood, stood still and the moon that's why i'm saying our title today is the creation obeys god all of them are witnesses if you don't want to witness for god out there my brother my brothers my sisters if you don't wit witness for god then it will be so unfortunate for you because because you'll find that god will use the sun the moon the earth to stand as silent witnesses for him so don't lose your chance witness for god share the video pass the message talk about yeshua the kingdom of god adonai's kingdom don't let that chance miss you just to witness for the most high god because if you don't do we've just seen what's going to happen the earth is going to witness and also we can see that one also in john the book of first john first john chapter 5 and verse uh, 8 
the book of first john chapter 5 verse 8 says and there and there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree in one witnesses are in many forms even the water is witnessing the rivers are witnessing unto the most high god so you'll see um, this according to the book of uh, in the torah there's this book called jasher as in j a s h e r that's an old testament book whereby it also talks about the five kings in jasher that's it was in chapter 88 verse 57 in that book it's a uh, judah a uh, judaism book the five kings had a mighty king numerous as the sand of the seashore those five kings there were so many but that if joshua went in his physical eyes he couldn't have succeeded in beating them the day was declining towards evening and yet the lord hearkened unto the voice of joshua and the sun stood still because it was going to get dark so that's when boldness of joshua came out and the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens and it stood still for according to that book it stood still for six and thirty moments say six hours thirty moments and the moon also stood still and hasted not to go down a whole day jesha is referred to the sacred and the inspired texts of the hebrew this book of this book of is mentioned in joshua chapter 10 and verse 13 uh, let's let me just read for you in verse 13 and the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies is not this written in the book of jesha so the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens and hasted not to go down about the whole day even the bible says it's written in this book of jesha how the sun stood still and also you'll find uh, in the book of second samuel in the book of second samuel chapter 1 and verse 18 chapter 1 and verse 18 and there were three sons of zeruiah there job abishai and asahel and asahel was a slight of foot and as a wild row and Ashelai pursued after Abna, and in going he turned not to the right or left, or not to the left, following Abna. These books, this war, it was a war in Israel against the Judah, against Judah, whereby if you read the whole book, you'll find that this Jeshua is mentioned. Also, I mean, they mentioned that book, how God moved, making the sun stand still. You know, it's interesting when you discover if the sun can stand still, anything is possible in the kingdom of God. Anything is pos possible. Uh, let's look uh, <clears throat> what's really intriguing my mind i'm trying to think of where i mean how interesting the sun stands still and everything on it so anyway let's carry on in verse 20, you know, Joshua followed the 
um, the these uh, the enemies they captured the kings and then they put them in fact they went after the enemy and conquered all the enemies the the kings had hidden themselves in a in a tomb that's in verse 16 to 27 they had hid themselves the five kings they had hid, hid, hid themselves in a tomb and because they knew they were they were losing so what happened here was that joshua decided he told his men cover that tomb with a mighty stone and then let's go and finish the work of the lord first so they went killed all the soldiers and took over the city that's when they decided to come back to the kings and there that's where they killed all these soldiers uh, all these kings sorry they captured the king okay capture of the kings was a personal victory to joshua but joshua had to finish the israel victory even if you've achieved your prize finish god's work first god can give you something when you're still halfway you're winning but still remember you've got work to do finish the job first if we look at uh, in first samuel is first samuel chapter fi um, 15 the book of first samuel it's talking about first samuel 15 it talks about uh, okay the the title of it is um, Saul rejected as king Saul rejected as king because uh, from here Saul had been doing stuff that they didn't delight they were not good in the eyes of the Lord. He went to war. You can read your, that chap, chapter 15 later on at your own time. But Saul went to war. And when he went to war, God told him, go attack the enemy. Attack, take, I mean, complete, finish everything. Destroy everything. But Saul went, he didn't kill everyone he didn't destroy everything he saved some and because of his disobedience the kingdom god said this kingdom i'm going to take it from Saul. so when you get a message my brothers my sisters if you get a message there just when you're told go and do something go and do everything that you've been told from a up to z don't cut shortcuts finish god's work and then come back and sit and relax there you'll find your reward waiting for you because here Saul messed up completely and that's how he didn't get anything in uh, Joshua verse 24 the, all the enemies the kings the commanders of the army of Israel put their feet on the necks of the king of the five kings, showing in short that God allowed them to conquer the kings. I pray unto God to allow you to put your foot on the necks of your enemy. Whatever type of enemy that you are that is encountering you. May you may thy enemies as in Psalms 110, verse 1 to 4. Thy enemies be thy foot, footstool. May the Lord make your enemies your footstools. You can step on them. And may the Lord bless you and guide you in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen and amen. Guys, if you are there, you don't know anything about Christ. And you want to be in this kingdom where the creation obeys the Most High God. You want to know how it, it's done and how you can do it also. It's simple. It's you to enter the kingdom of God. Be a child of God. Just say this prayer after me. 
Father, I come before you as a sinner. I renounce my sins, my old life. I want to be a child of God. Accept me, O Jehovah, in your kingdom. I agree and believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. Cleanse me. Allow me to be part of the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. If you say that prayer, God is happy with you. He's so happy. And you can join a church near you. You can join a... Let's start reading the Bible. Make sure you go through the Bible word by word, letter by letter. And the Christians, brothers in the churches, they'll guide you every single time. And you'll be part of the family. And everybody is excited about you. And Father Lord, I pray for my viewers. Bless each and every one of them. Touch them with your mighty power. Protect them as they close the year. Each and every one of them. Guide them in a new year. Let them have new things, new revelations new promises uh, let the coming year be a year that like never before in their lives in their families in yeshua's mighty name amen and amen thank you guys may the lord bless you may you enjoy as you close your year this year god bless you see you next time see you next year in fact amen and amen